Hi, I'm Aubrey Mitchell, and we are starting something new today. On the last few episodes, my dad, Pastor George, CEO of Kenneth Copa Ministries, has taken you inside some of our departments to show you how we do things here at the ministry. We've also given you some updates on some various projects, and we've had some fantastic guests in the studio to encourage and inspire your vision. But today, we wanna help build your vision. We want to give you the tools to lay a solid foundation for your vision and to grow your faith. So today we're going to vision school. Get your vision journal, your pen, your iPad, or however you take notes. Grab some coffee and get ready because today we're going inside the classroom for vision school. I'm sure you can probably tell how much I enjoy the subject of vision. Vision is so important to our lives. It's so important to the life of Kenneth Copa Ministries. And I know how important it is to you because it's all about the future. And we're talking about vision today. Vision is something that the Lord wants every one of us to walk in. Now, the purpose of this program is twofold. Number one, it is to reveal to you and show you what Kenneth Copa Ministries is doing, what we've done what we're doing right now, what we're going to do. We want you to see all the amazing things that are taking place here at Kenneth Copa Ministries, and especially to our partners, how much you're involved in that with us, and how you add your prayers to what we're doing, your finances to what we're doing here, and, and to see that as a partner, your connection with the vision of Kenneth Copa Ministries produces heavenly rewards in your life, and you can partake of those heavenly rewards. You will get credit for every soul that is saved, every word that is preached, every place that Brother Copeland goes, every place that this ministry goes. You get credit for that as a partner because of your connection to it. Now, let me talk to you about another part of Inside the Vision. Inside the Vision has also been designed to inspire your vision, to bring out from you what God has for you, the purpose of your life, the purpose of why he's placed you here on this earth and how he can move on the inside of you and you can see what he has for you. So we're talking about here, and this is, I like to call it this, I like to call this vision school. I have my Bible, I have my notes, I have my tea. And we're going to be talking about how important vision is to our lives. And one of the places that I want to start with this is in Genesis chapter 13 to give us a starting point of how do you describe vision? How is vision defined, if you will? But let's look first of all at Genesis 13, and it starts in verse 14. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I'll make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Then he said this, Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width for I will give it to you. This is such an amazing scripture when we're talking about vision. We saw here that God, first of all, separated him from Lot, and he said, lift your eyes. I believe the Lord is saying that to you right now. Wherever you are, whatever position you're in, whatever's going on in your life, lift your eyes and look now to the place from where you are. From where you are, you can see vision. From where you are, <clears throat> and no matter what it is, no matter what kind of situation you have going on, no matter what's taking place in your life, it may look impossible. But the Lord is, this is a word from the Lord to you. He's saying, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are. And he told Abram, he said, northward, southward, eastward, westward, for all of the land which you see, I give to you and to your descendants forever. I think about people who've been in very desperate situations before. And these people had, had really not any kind of future to look to. And the Lord may talk to them and talk to them about their future and what they have for them to do. And they just began where they were. 
You need to begin right where you are. Why? Because there's a vision on the inside of you. There's a vision that God has. I remember uh, Miles Monroe said this many years ago, and it so stuck with me. He talked about the fact that God had a purpose in mind. He had an assignment that he wanted to create and have done on the earth. But he waited for you to be born, for that, for the fulfillment of that vision and that assignment to take place. I think about that for myself. I think about that for you. There is something that the Lord wants you to do, and he waited for you to be born, for you to get that vision and to lay hold of it and then to arise and walk it out. And you know, vision When we're talking about vision, it's so important because the book of Habakkuk tells us to write the vision and make it plain so that those that read it may run with it. You need to write down the vision. What is it on the inside of your heart that the Lord is stirring? What is it that you enjoy? What? Because I have found in my experience that the vision that he gives you is something that will directly connect with the desire of your heart <clears throat> to be involved in something that, that is so much bigger than yourself. And that's what God does with vision. He gives us a vision that in our own natural thinking, there's no way to get it done. And he loves to do that. He loves to impart that. And if you'll look, if you'll just look at the history of different people who have had major vision and major uh, uh, accomplishments and contributions to our society and to culture, you look at those people and you look, I love to look at their biographies and see where they started. Where did they begin? And so often <clears throat> there are people that begin in desperate poverty conditions and situations. You know, you talk about somebody like Jesse Duplantis, who is a vision specialist, and you look at him now, and you look at all that he's doing and and reaching around the world with the Word of God, but where did he start? Where did he begin? He began in a very poverty situation, a very desperate situation, but once he laid hold of the vision that God had for him, and once, once he got saved and made Jesus his Lord, then the Lord took him, redirected. <clears throat> he redirected the, the part that he had in his life. Jesse was a performer. He was an entertainer. He loved being in front of people. And the Lord took that and rewired it and restructured it. And now he's in front of people, but he's not performing. He's preaching. He's preaching the gospel. Well, the Lord wants to do the same thing with you. There's a vision that every one of us has. Let me just give you a couple of things here. Vision simply is sight. It's sight. It's the ability to see. It's the ability to see what others don't see. I love that. It's the ability to to get the desired result something that you're looking for, something that you're hungry for. And it is a vision that goes beyond natural limitations. That's why you look at everything around here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, and you look at where Kenneth and Gloria Copeland started, and they were below the poverty line, but they heard from God. And the Lord spoke a vision to Brother Copeland, and he said, nations, nations. And now this man and woman of God over all of these 55 plus years have been fulfilling that vision that has changed the lives of so many people. They've traveled the world and are still traveling the world. Vision. Vision is so important. And the Lord has a vision for you. No, don't, don't th- sit there and think to yourself, well, there's no way I could have a vision. Look at, look at what I've got around me. That's the problem. You're looking at what you've got around you. But the important thing is that you have vision residing on the inside of you. And just like the Apostle Paul, the Lord gave him a heavenly vision, and he was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Lord, I pray for the folks that are watching right now, and I thank you. You have a heavenly vision that you want to show them. And I thank you that they are laying hold of it, 
They are taking it by faith, vision by faith, in the name of Jesus. I know that God is working in you right now, and we here on Inside the Vision are in agreement with you that you are going to get inside your vision, and the Lord is gonna show you some things, even today, even after we go off the air. Just take some time to sit and to pray and to say, Lord, show me your vision for my life. Show me what you want me to accomplish, and I'll do it. I'll do it. I will follow you, and I'll follow the vision that you've given me to do and just say, thank you, Lord. I believe it, I receive it, I take it, in Jesus' name. You know, Proverbs says, without vision, people perish. That sounds pretty important to me. It sounds like the Lord wants His people to have vision. But also in Hebrews, it says, it's impossible to please God without faith. Vision and faith are so important to God, but it's important to Him that you have vision and you have faith. Will you say, well, I don't even know how to have vision. Well, I can tell you right now, the way you feed your vision is surrounding yourself with people who know how to have vision. The same way you do with faith. You surround yourself with faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And some people think that means just listening to a message on the way to church or listening to teaching in church. But it also means what you're hearing in conversation. What are you hearing yourself say? What are you hearing the company you keep say? We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. I know for me that I get so encouraged and inspired when I'm listening to other people's testimony, other people's story talking about what they've heard in the word, how they applied it, what revelation they got, and I'm sitting there going, oh my goodness, I need to do that for myself. Well, I have somebody that I wanna to introduce to you. It's a longtime friend of mine. Her name's Diana Groves. And one of the main things that she does here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries as our features producer is hearing testimonies, right? That's I, why it, It's the best job ever. I tell people I have the best job in the world. And I can really see why. <laughs> I can see why. So over, well, you've been here. Well, you've been here a long time. Been here a long time, but, but you've been doing long. features since 2015, and so it has. I've lost track of how many people, but I think I've sat down with over 300 people and gotten to hear their stories of victory. That is amazing. It really is. I'm sitting there. I get to hear them talk about what God's done in their life, things that they've believed for, stood for, seen, seen overcome. And it is such an encouragement, just like you said, when you hear other people talking about it. That's what I feel every time I hear a testimony is mm -hmm. so encouraged of God did it for them and he can do it for me. And the thing that, one of the main reasons that we at Kenneth Copeland Ministries like to sit down with our more quote unquote everyday partners is because sometimes people associate the goodness of God with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland like, well, yeah, but that's them. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I'm sitting down with Joe and Jessica Weiss, God does it for them just the same as he does Absolutely. it for Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. God does it for you just the same as he does it for me. That's right. And so I think part of what is so special about being able to hear people's stories, and this theme is repeated through every one of them that I've, I've been able to talk to, is they actually applied the word. Yeah. They took what they learned from God and they applied it and acted on it. And it's such an encouragement of, oh, I need to do that. Mm -hmm. I need to take these things that I'm learning and actually act on them and see God bring it to pass. Yeah, because we haven't fully arrived. We're no. not perfect. <laughs> Don't tell our husbands, uh -uh. but you know, there are things that we are learning as staff here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. We're always learning, we're always growing. And sometimes it does help when you get to hear the same message or the same type of testimony, but in a different package. And you hear it and you go, oh, I haven't heard it that way. I bet just hearing all of those testimonies does that for you. Oh, absolutely. And we have one that we want to share today. It's Kara and Kate O'Connor. And they surrounded themselves with the vision of healing. And mm. especially in something as serious as a life and death healing situation, you have to put it everywhere. You have to keep that word in your heart, in your eyes, in your ears, at all times. And so watch this and be encouraged by what you're gonna see. I'm Kara O'Connor and this is... I am Kate O'Connor. And we're from Southern California. We basically, all of us ended up getting um, COVID. My husband, my daughter and I, and um, but my yeah. husband had it the worst. 
and he had to go to the hospital. So they immediately put him on, you know, high dose vitamin D. Um, they put him on IV. They put him on um, a, a bunch of different medications. And um, we were thinking, okay, because we're standing in faith. We know how to stand in faith. I was standing in faith for myself, um, standing in faith for her. Hey, you know, yeah. he'll be out just, you know, in a day or two. But he started going down. So instead of getting better, every day the report would come back. Oh, his oxygen has got lower. We have to put him on a higher level of oxygen intake. So next thing you know, he was on the highest level of oxygen intake. So every time I kept calling them, it was bad news. And so I had to, um, I had to really focus on everything that I learned through this ministry and through, um, um, you know, what we've learned studying the Word. I understood the principle that right now in this battle, it's a life and death battle for my husband's life. I could not have head faith. I had to have, have heart faith. I could not be just saying this out of my head. I had to believe it in my heart. And I knew when I first got off the phone with the nurses, um, I didn't have that heart faith. I knew I was saying it based on what I, my knowledge, my head knowledge, my, my mental assent. Yes, I know this is true because God has said it. I, I know this is true. I mentally agree with it, but I had, there was fear. There was a lot of fear that I felt, and I had feelings of doubt. And so I'm like, okay, I know what I need to do. I need to immerse. I was reading my word, I was speaking the word, I was listening to the word, listening to EMIC, listening to KCM, listening to Go Victory, just getting that word in me. And when I walked in, I saw the house caked with post-it notes. <laughs> I just kept writing, Daddy's healed, symptom-free, perfect lungs, will fulfill his high calling on the earth. You know, just like I was sticking them on every single part of the house, every single drawer, the door, even the toilet paper, <laughs> in the toilet. <laughs> yes. I mean, on the cat, on the cat's back. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> I was just like, oh Lord, praise God. The Lord said, you're gonna see one small sign of improvement, it'll be tiny. Yes. But he says, that's the moment it's going to be accelerated. Um, when I called the nurse for an update, she goes, well, his oxygen went up by one point. I'm like, there it is. Praise the Lord. Yes. He's healed. It's done. And sure enough, literally after that, his oxygen just started just up, 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 up. And by the time they released him, um, he didn't need any oxygen. He walked out without a, con uh, a container. He had been diagnosed with not only COVID pneumonia, but a pulmonary lung embolism. So he had a lung clot. Yeah. And so they said, this is gonna, this can take, you know, months to years to clear that clot. And within two weeks, he went to the doctor. And they, they say perfect lungs. Yeah, they listened to his lungs and they're like, your lungs sound clear. When you partner with somebody who lives their life with integrity, who lives their life with honor and great faith and loves the Lord, and he... With all their heart. Yeah, he, everything is, is, is for God and God is love. And since everything he does is out of that love, he's just pouring love into everybody else. And it's, it's, it, it, you, you can see that. And so you say, I want to partner with that. Jesus led us to this ministry. Yeah. And he has this ministry here for a reason. Yeah, so, so it just helps. I say partner. <laughs> if you're not a partner, yeah. partner. <laughs> I love that. And I love seeing childlike faith rise to the occasion. But something Kara said that really got me was that it took heart faith, not head faith. Because it matters what's in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's right. Well, we want to hear your story of victory. Send your testimonies to insidethevision.org slash testimony. Welcome back to Vision School. You know, we're talking about how important vision is in our lives. Vision is so important around here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, and there's a lot of it. There's a lot going on. There's so many projects, so many things. We're, we're actually going in different directions. Just some time ago, we found Brother Copeland was going in this direction, and Gene Bailey was going in that direction. Things were happening at the church. And this, the revival capital of the world, the vision that the Lord gave to Brother Copeland many years ago, it's alive, and it's well, and it's happening. Things are happening around here. And I know 
that the Lord wants the same thing for you. Thank you, partners, first of all, for your participation in what's going on here. It's so important for you to know inside the vision what's taking place, what's happening, but it's also important for you to know that the Lord has a vision for you. He's got some things he wants you to fulfill. And when we were talking before, we used the scripture from Genesis 13 about Abram in verse 14 that said, uh, after Lot was separated from him, the Lord said to him, lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are, north, south, east, and west, for all the land which you see I will give to you and to your descendants forever. I'll make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust, then your descendants could, could be numbered. Then it says this, arise, walk in the land. And you really could say there, walk by faith. Walk by faith in the land <clears throat> through its length and its width, for I'll give it to you. And I almost said this, walk in the land of vision. Walk in the land of vision. Keep your vision. S surround yourself with it. You know, that's why refrigerators were created. Refrigerators were, you thought refrigerators were created to store food in a cool, cold place. No, really, refrigerators were created so that you could put the vision on it and you can put, you can write the vision and make it plain so that you can run with it. And there, there are so many homes that I've been into that sometimes I, when I go into the kitchen, I look at the refrigerator and I see what's on there. And I see, I see what vision is on there. We were over at Kelly Copeland's house one day and we were, we were over there for some gathering or something. And I went into the kitchen to get something and I looked at her refrigerator door and I thought, well, this is really cool. I was looking at what she was believing for. She was keeping the vision before her. And really the scripture that we have to read that goes to that is in Habakkuk chapter two. And it says in verse one, I will stand upon my watch, my post of observation. I love that. The post of observation, I'll stand upon my watch and will set myself upon a tower and will see what he will say unto me and what I will answer. And when I'm reproved, and the Lord answered me, and he said, write the vision, make it plain on tables, that he may run that reads it. You know, one of the big projects that we have here is Victory Studios, and Victory Studios is a massive project that we have set before us, and, and it's so important because as the ministry is growing, the need for space is growing, I know that as your family is growing, the need for space is growing. So listen to what I'm saying. We're believing for more space. And some of you need more space in your home. You need a, a new home. And one of the things that we did, and this is so funny because it didn't come to me until I was looking at it one day, we made a model of Victory Studios. A model of Victory Studios. A scale model of what it looks like and what it, what it is going to be, what the fulfillment of the vision is going to be. And, and you can see the studios laid out. You can see the welcome center. You can see the parking lot. You can see the roads on the property. It helps me to see the vision because it builds faith on the inside of me, an actual model of that vision. And it goes right along with the scripture, write the vision, make it plain upon tables. Well, the, the actual uh, creation of that model sits on a table. And I thought, wow, that's a revelation. It sits on a table. Well, you could say here, write the vision and make it plain on your refrigerator door. Put it up there. And it says, so that he may run that reads it. And I like this next part in verse three. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. The vision that God gives us, it is so necessary for our lives. And I'll tell you how necessary it is. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. <clears throat> One translation says they run wild. They go crazy. There's no direction. So where there is no vision, the people perish. But you know, if you turn that scripture around, where there is vision, people will prosper. Where there is a vision in your life, 
your family will prosper. When you have something to reach for, when you have something that you're stretching your faith out towards, you will see what God has for you. Helen Keller was asked, what would be worse than being born blind? She replied, to have sight with no vision. So we have to have vision. It says in Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. What's your dream? What is your dream? Terry Savelle Foy is on the Victory Channel, and that is her total focus of what she brings to her audience. The dreams that people have. What, be, feel free to dream. Feel free to dream big. And I was thinking about this the other day, and I actually did this. Some, somebody said something to me years ago that, that I thought about the other day and I did it. And they said, they said, you need to sit down and ask God, how do you run the universe? So I did that just the other day. <clears throat> I sat down, I said, Lord, how do you run the universe? And the answer that I got was, we'll have eternity to show you. Wow. Father, I thank you for the vision that you've given each one of us now, and we glorify you for it. Lord, I thank you that, oh, oh, I got it, I got it. You have my permission to dream. Amen. The Revival Capital of the World Vision is alive and well, and we want the same thing for you. Thank you again for joining us today as we dove deeper into the importance of vision. It's good to build a solid foundation for your vision and grow your faith. I pray this was a Kickstarter for you to dream bigger. I wanna give you an opportunity to become a KCM Vision Insider. It's so easy to sign up. All you have to do is go to insidethevision.org. It only takes just a few minutes to sign up and you'll receive your own personal vision journal. You'll also receive a book by Kenneth Copeland about the power of partnership. You'll receive email updates that are designed to feed your vision, grow your faith, and inform you about all the things happening around here at the ministry. Plus, bonus content that you'll only be able to find when you become a KCM Vision Insider. This is also a great opportunity to partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Partnering with KCM is not just about a donation. It's about connecting, connecting to the anointing on this ministry. And the anointing we are walking in, you can walk in too. What God is doing for us here, He will do for you. Again, visit InsideTheVision.org to sign up. Thank you so much for joining us today on Inside the Vision. I dare you to dream and to dream big. So remember, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Thank you.